Ja, herzlich willkommen zum A warm welcome to our seminar, positional training focusing on the build up. Ähm, ich möchte zunächst, bevor ich in die Details einsteige, einen kleinen Überblick geben. Before going into detail, I would like to present an overview of the topic at hand and I can easily tie it in with our last seminar on offense. In that seminar, we also dealt with topics like build-up, creating and taking advantages of scoring opportunities, how to make the transition, etc. In the current seminar series, the build-up will be at the center again, but this time with an emphasis on positional training. And here it is the technical aspect which gets attention, while technical considerations cannot be ignored, of course. Technique and tactics cannot be separated. Let's look at our topic. What is positional training? What do we mean when we use the term? How important is positional training in today's game? It seems to me that every position has certain demands, starting with a keeper up to the number nine position. We have certain expectations when it comes to the various positions. How a certain position is played depends also, of course, on the type of player in that position. Let me list a few examples. Schweinsteiger, Xavi in the number six position, Messi or Ozil in an attacking position, Piquet and Mats Hummel in central defensive positions. These players have a tremendous influence on the game from their respective positions. Let me explain and show examples of what I mean by types of players. Take Bayern Munich. They have Robin and Ribéry playing wide, each of whom has different individual qualities. Both of them are very strong dribblers, especially tempo dribbling. If you compare Thomas Müller and Goetze with them, and they are good dribblers in their own right, but their strength is more the passing game, the combination play. Which means that these players, also playing wide, approach the game differently and interpret their positions accordingly. And yet players like this have to continue to show development and refining their skills, while at the same time playing to their strength. In this context, the coach's philosophy plays a role too. A simple example. Many coaches prefer to play with two strikers, one of them the tall penalty box kind of striker and the smaller agile colleague, the type that plays the number 10 position. These two have to complement each other, and this is a very important point when talking about the requirements for a certain position. Understanding the game and athletic abilities play a big role as well. I think it is clear that the ideal player for a wide position has to be fast, be a good dribbler and competent when it comes to passing, etc. etc. The combination of qualities will not always be present, but the player's athletic abilities have to be developed. And of course, tactical intelligence, which hopefully has been developed ever since the player was involved in youth soccer. And the basis for all of this are the technical components. And here we observe positional specializations in today's game. This aspect is becoming more and more significant. The names I just mentioned, Messi, Ötzil, Schweinsteiger, they are dominant in their positions and interpret them their own way. And we need to pay attention to this, given the topic we are dealing with. But before getting into details, let me explain the idea behind these seminars. The first seminar has as its topics positional training and build-up as it applies to defensive positions. Central defender, wing defender, the number six position, but this does not mean that offensive positions will be ignored. Discussing build-up has to involve the initiation of the attack by the defense, to skip lines, play the ball forward, etc., etc. In a subsequent part of this series, there will be detailed discussion of attacking positions and training these for creating chances and converting them into goals. Right now, the defensive players are the main actors, but not playing defensive roles, but how to initiate the attack. And 
And when talking offence, the ball cannot be left out because it is the main object. And with that, technical abilities play a major role. And, as just mentioned, we do not want to separate technique from tactics. These two aspects are closely linked. And we could illustrate this connection with examples. When practicing the wall pass, excellent passing technique is a must, otherwise the wall pass will not look like it should. If players cannot pass well, they will not be able to play a wall pass. Another example, in order to execute a switch in play to the other side, to nullify the opponents pushing against the ball, the player with the ball and intending to play the ball to the other side needs to be skilled in delivering the long, accurate pass. And that is an essential skill that needs to be mastered. And positional training will give him many opportunities to practice this particular technique. Because of that, positional training has to be a regular ingredient in practice sessions, but it should not start with youngsters. Particularly with children, it is important to give them schooling in general, technical abilities. Children and youth players should learn how to dribble, to pass and to shoot. It is too early for positional training because at that stage it is often not clear which position a player will end up playing. Starting with youth players 15 years of age or so, positional training should be introduced. I believe it is already possible at that age to recognize players who have a defensive or an offensive orientation and begin to get experience in their positions. At the same time, athletic, technical and tactical development has to be promoted at all times. And in this endeavor, positional training has an important place. Let me give a simple example. Receiving and moving with the ball on the ground is different for the number 9 or number 10 player than it would be for a wing defender. An outside defender presents an open stance to the ball, receives the pass from his central defender or his number 6 and moves from that stance forward with the ball in most cases. On the other hand, the number 9 or number 10 player is likely to be moving with his back towards the ball to get open and find the lanes in which he can collect the ball played to him. Because of that, the technique employed by these different positions will be different. And because of that, these specific techniques have to be practiced the way they will be required in the game. According to my favorite guideline, the game is the best teacher. The game gives us the right ideas what and how to train. To practice maneuvers the way they occur in the game cannot be wrong. Practices are preparation for the game. The game will write the best practice sessions in one of my convictions. That will be our orientation in this seminar series, which will become quite practical in parts 2, 3 and 4. There will be many suggestions as to how to organize a session that trains positions. These were meant to be introductory observations before we now move to more details. And let me state a disclaimer at the outset. It will not be possible to cover every aspect as the topic is much too complex for that. Just addressing the topic of build-up will make clear how complex this chapter is and forces me to work selectively. And later in the other parts where we will continue to investigate positional training methods, it cannot cover every angle. I think you will find my suggestions helpful, allowing you to refine and improve positional techniques of your players by applying these ideas in your regular practices with your team. Well, let's start Seminar 1 with an introduction, Foundations. Talking about positional training and build-up requires the presentation of certain basic items, which I'm about to do. These aspects are related to the seminar on offense. You could call this seminar a summary in part of the seminar on offense plus additional aspects, which will be presented in detail. 
It is important for me to know that the coach who watches this seminar ends up with a good notion of what the strategies for a build-up and what the principles of it are. Training of technique and positional training are based on this foundation.